we are uh, now we are uh, we're reaching the we're reaching a part where like I felt like I, I couldn't uh, really improve um, the 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 metal part anymore. I'm I'm gonna quickly work on the on the legs just to 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 finish out just to bring back that that cold uh, lighting and also here you see that I'm really trying to design an interesting shape for the reflection part like I was saying everything is important everything is a thing everything is a shape you should consider you should consider every single shape uh, and, and design them according to their their relevance to the, to the rest of the, the painting the, and the rest of the uh, the rest of the objects uh, in the scene um, and and it's just a, I, I mean there's no really rules to it like again it's in same form by references 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 looking at our reality works and what kind of rea what kind of shapes reality generates based on the form and the environment and the light and stuff like that and some are more interesting than others that's just uh that's just personal taste but that's just our reality is it's just like and there is a reason why uh armor or like for example reflective material like cars when you look at a car show they always lit the room in a certain way to create the maximum uh highlights and variations on on the on the outer shell of the car and, and there's so many different lightings because they want every part to to be to come out um and there's a reason for that i mean these guys are i've been probably studying this thing for way longer than you or me so you just kind of reproduce it and the same as like looking at the armor pieces in museums or stuff like that when they ex exhibit it well they, they lit up they are lit up in a certain way so and this is because it generates the the maximum impact and and it shows the form in the mac in the, the the most beautiful way so what i'm doing is just that i'm just looking at that and learning from that and trying it for myself and and um when i reach kind of the same uh sort of feeling and, and i realize well it, it does actually look nice and why is it because the shapes again generated and the contrast between cold and warm and it's just it's just pleasing and so that's just what you're trying to do um just looking at reference informing informing your dumb brain about what looks good um so now that i've, I've improved the legs now we're getting in sort of like the best uh part of the painting for me is like what is the putting all the, the icing on the cake because we worked on the on the base layer metal, like I was saying, of the armor for a very long time, and uh, it might be that at that time I felt like, well, I don't know what to do anymore, or like I was bored of just doing metal, or, or for some reason, and so I started adding the 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 color accents and the gold, and starting to um, starting to try to find what the try to find what are what are the the, the right pieces of shapes to add. On this armor layer to make it to to make it pop out, and again I just look at reference and see what's the what's what what they add on top of that, and how much quantity of it there is, and what kind of shape it is made of, where they put it, etc. And uh, and try it myself. And uh, so again, uh, it's just to, for me. It's like I love to look. It's just personal taste, but f I love to look at a, a painting, and every area that I look at as something little things interesting to look at so it's like you have layers to dig in you know it's not it, it doesn't take too much attention but if you want to spend time on every area you can and there's something to look at okay it's like uh, I, I i just trying to not bore myself with uh each area and while respecting the hierarchy of what i constructed before trying to add little things I call them little stories, but for lack of better words, but yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm I'm just trying to add little visual stories, uh, uh, visual color and shape stories that are interesting to just spend a few more seconds on, and, and just something that is pleasing for the eye. So, um, I mean, if you think about it, it this is like a, the theme of, of of this is sort of black and gold. I would say, like in in terms of general description, whereas the black is the seventy percent and the gold is thirty percent or eighty twenty, and so the balancing act now is to try to find the right balance and in terms of uh, placement and quantity, and again it's uh, it's um, it's a trial and error game, and again like you see that I use the 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 the, 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 the focal point as a test area 
and I developed that concept there of the, the next layer with the shoulder pad and the forearm armor and I found that it was satisfying for now so now I'm going to spread it around and um, and so so it's the same process as before it's just rinse refine and repeat um, but like I said like at this point the, the design is is, is uh, I mean it, it's a long way from the beginning and it's safe to say that you know nothing is going to change drastically at some point. so for me it's like it's sort of relief uh, you know it's the I'm out of the swamp stage of every painting where it's really hard to uh, to know, to see forward and to to move forward but then once you you out of that um, you reach the the, the, the green uh, prairie fields of uh, of uh, <laughs> how do you call it um, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like now it's time to rest and enjoy enjoy the the journey, the, the the end of the journey. You can see the end. You can see the you can see the pub where you're gonna have a beer in the distance. And and now the 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 land is dry. The walking is easy, and you just have to you know keep going. But you know that the you you know that you you reach you almost reach your destination. It's just a matter of like putting one step uh, at a time forward, and 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 getting it done. Um, here I, I, I kind of like I'm hiding it's like a, the 2d work on on the surface like a surface treatment again trying to make adding adding um, patterns that are interesting to look at while they are not too distracting but they just like um, an end uh, that area instead of having a boring uh, surface you just have like variations in, in shapes and colors and values um, which I found were quite interesting. Or just it's just like a, it, uh, what comes to mind at this point is like when I listened to the interview of the Mad Max director, um, and he was saying that his wife did the editing for the movie, and that's the reason why you can't take your eyes off the screen. Is like uh, she made she she was like uh, she's like she's bored when you can see twice the same. Um, shot or the same uh, way of cutting or the same angle the same stuff like that she, she gets she was getting she gets bored when she watched movies like that so she made a point of not doing that and so every shot of the movie is different and new and fresh and even if it, it goes with the, the the main theme but it's just uh, always always different and that, that thing stuck with me because uh, uh, I, I mean i, I can never take my eyes off of, the, of this movie as soon as i started and um and so in a way I, I try to reproduce, incorporate this lesson into uh, my painting. So, I'm not saying that this is on the level of the, this fucking masterpiece that Fury Fury Road is, but the intent is to make every area, like I was saying, interesting, but at the same time different than the next. But at the same time, part of the same, like kind of the same and part of the same theme, but different a little bit. So you you get like it, each area gives you a different candy. Uh, but you know, it's it's still part of the same flavor, but it's a little different. I don't know how to explain it better. I'm French. I'm gonna start making cooking metaphors. Um, here is like um, what I'm adding here. The little dots um, is like um, it's something that I thought about after listening to um, what's his name, Adrian Smith uh, interview. It, it came back to me. Uh, he was saying that, that that he always tried to. Like he, at some point in his in his in his uh, artistic development, he started using patterns as a way of of separating different areas instead of using values or colors. He used patterns, and it's a nice way to complement um, an area without too much work, um, and also without adding too much visual complexity in terms of like over designing, over putting too many shapes or breaking down too many to the shapes. Uh, too much so like here on the forearm i think those are those little cloud those, those little dots which are like uh cloud i think you say you call them um it's it it just again it brings something new uh that we haven't seen yet in this design and 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 but at the same time it goes with the theme and and there's also something a lesson that i, I learned um, a long time ago in terms of abstract design is that you? You always want your your your, comp your your composition, whatever it is, to be made out of shapes, lines, and dots. Uh, it might sound 
weird what I'm saying right now, but try it by yourself. Uh, try to do, you know, just simple composition within a, within a frame of uh, just lines or just shapes like uh, plain shapes or or just dots, and then try mixes of each of them and. You, you kind of find out that the most interesting ones in the end is the one that are composed of, of the three of them, the lines, um, the shapes, and the dots. It really is. like it, it's, it's so strange, but it, 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 it does work. And so um, adding those dots is, is kind of like doing this in this painting. Um, I found that, it, again, it's, in terms, it's just a, a variety thing uh, for the eye uh, to, to be entertained, the visual, visual entertainment. Uh, globular eyeball entertainment um, and, and it can be I mean dots can be in highlights in like uh, screws and anything that 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 has actually a shape of, of a circle but at small scale it looks like a dot and um, the lines you know here we, we have the all the edges of the armor are kind of the lines the, all the highlights make up those lines and then the shapes are the armor shapes and everything but but so you'll see that by the end of it we'll, we'll have a nice composition of that and Again, I'm no no master or professional, but but my my experience tells me that it, it more often than not it makes me satisfy of a composition when I make point of doing of 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 including all these elements together and try to mix them together. And again, like they they, they can they can come from any uh, direction. It, it can be a, a rendering thing. It can be a like when I'm in rendering, like it can be the the light shapes or dark shapes. It can be the object in themselves. It can be anything. It just has to be a mix of shape, lines, and dots. Um, so now I'm like uh, I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time on those uh, gold elements on the sh on the on the thighs, and um, slowly I'm gonna come to the idea of using that as uh, an echo of the theme I was uh, talking about at the beginning which is that every piece of the armor represents uh, the one of the prey that this uh, this cat is hunting and uh, in this case I'm going to echo again the theme of the birds so I'm going to turn those uh, which are for now just just like uh, just like uh, flat pieces I'm going to try to bring the volume out of that and uh, it's a quite a tricky uh, part here because it's like uh, it it, set, it sits on a curve, on a like, sort of cylinder cylinder shape. So you have to curve it around. Uh, side view, looking down. I mean, it's, there's a ton of challenges there. But um, again, I'm just going uh, looking at reference of something that is kind of similar to inform uh, what kind of shapes are there, how volumes are turning in. in uh, in space and just trying it out until it until it works. That is the 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 only rule, the only the only good advice I can give you and you probably heard it before of course is like, you know, just fuck with it until it works. That is the, the only thing we all do. We just we just work at it and throw everything we have until until it until it works. Until it's satisfying enough that you can let it go. And you see that I failed several times. I, I tried several uh, beak shape, bird shape. Um, I couldn't couldn't get it to come out. But uh, you see, I quickly erase it, and then I and I fidget a little bit and like spending time on useless things because um, my mind is processing information or some shit like that. And then I'll I'll, I'll get back to it. Like now you see me uh, working on edges, and it's something that I've noticed with art edge is like uh, literally by definition, the most important, the most sort of important thing is actually to clean your edges and to make your edges interesting uh, and, and detailed enough so so that the, they actually feel solid. Sometimes it's it doesn't matter what's inside the the, the, the flat part, but the edge part becomes. Uh, the focus and if you get that you don't get that right it just doesn't work and you see that that I was like the thigh the the, the, the thigh uh, part I kind of let it go for now because I, I just didn't know what to do with it and it's fine you just gonna move around um, and you see also that those ends 
the end and the weapon the ends and the weapons are one of the last thing that I'm gonna do again same as the fur because until I figure out what's behind and how they connect to the, the main body and the arms I don't want to waste time uh, on them although I mean here is like I was scared of I, I'm always scared of tackling hands because I'm uh, although there's nothing I cannot undo or, or try again but um, they're just a bit daunting and, and it's like it's those one of those things that are extremely difficult to get so I just like procrastinate and do something else um, and one of those things also that I kept pushing is how to deal with the crotch area um, And again, here is like uh, it's another trying to solve the functionality, functionality uh, mechanical design of, of the the arm joining to the wrist, joining to the to the forearm, which is um, something that I didn't solve properly. And that's where, for example, a line design at the beginning would have helped if I had sorted out that thing back then. Then now I wouldn't be struggling with it. Um, So you can you might want to do it differently, but it's up to you. I'll get I'll, I'll solve it eventually. I'm just saying in terms of like efficiency, you might want to do it differently. That's how I did it in this case, and it ended up working out. But you know. So here I kind of gave up on the crotch area and decided to just cover it in fur and and let it do that. I think also because I, I was looking, I went and, and like looked at my cat and um and saw that I, the actual the hair the hairs um kind of varies a lot uh, throughout the body and you have a lot of different sort of hairs. Um some of and especially around this area where there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of curl and there's a lot of little 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 strands and big strands so i thought it would be kind of interesting to for this area to compare to the head for example which will have a different uh, type of hair uh, so i just decided to let it go and again like like i did at the beginning with the mask i decided to remove the mask to 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 an, to, to to showcase the fur instead which was my actual begin uh, my, my first intent so saying true to that intent so like okay let's not get distracted here and and just focus on the main theme And now we're back on the birds, the thigh birds. It's a, it's inspired from the Tengu, Tengu Japanese mask, I guess, in the shape. Uh, so just, I mean, a quick word about gold. Gold is, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not expert in it, but now by now I've, I've painted a couple of times, and uh, what I've noticed is like a lot of the, the, the mistakes that I was doing in the beginning was. Same as with everything else, like when I was talking about primary colors, and when you're a kid, you like a bright red, bright blue, but na, 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 na. so in the same way, like gold is not is not yellow, for example, it's not at all yellow. It's more like brown, uh, greens, um, and it's very most in most part is very desaturated, um, and it 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 has a, it has a very particular way of absorbing uh, surrounding colors and, and the transition colors um, especially around the core shadows is, is is like more orange and stuff like that. so there's there's like you have to go and observe really high quality gold and not cheap gold on like fake gold because this will give you a cartoony look but go to look at old very precious gold that has a lot of history to it and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, wear and tear and um, it will give you all the information you need to understand what what makes gold look like precious and heavy and uh, and worth worth a lot sort of look um, so it's not it's definitely not yellow for sure <laughs>
and it helps of course to to study from life like get a get a get a gold object a gold little statue or something like that and, and study it and you'll see that you'll be you'll be amazed at how wrong you were uh, in terms of like thinking this it was this or that color And of course, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and it's it's obviously it could be painted way better. This gold, especially on, on the thigh, uh, what I ended up with is okay, but I mean, you can always do better. I love how these Japanese masks like they somehow they look goofy, but when you when you consider the character in general, how menacing or he is, and like he, and when you had that kind of level of slightly humorous designs, I mean it, it kind of looked actually creepy and even more menacing or or uh, dangerous looking. So here, uh, I mean, it's another interesting exercise that makes rendering fun for me, is that you have the same object but see, seen from a different angle. So it's kind of fun to try to imagine how this shape turns around without being assisted by a 3D program, for example. And uh, and of course, I'm making mistakes, and it's it's actually not not at all the same <laughs> volume turn in the other direction. But that's also cool because again, in terms of uh, visual entertainment, is just same thing but a little different so when you look at it you don't feel like bored I guess because you're not looking exactly at the same thing it's slightly different and so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an and it's another flavor And and it is like um, here I'm trying to put the least information possible to do the maximum work. It's not very defined. It's not very refined. It's not very designed. It's not very well drawn or anything. But from afar, I'm just adding the right informations to describe the volume that I have in mind, and 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 that's it. I'm not. I'm not trying to add more. I'm not. I'm not doing any surface really treatment. I'm. I'm just mostly mainly working on forms, rendering and 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 adding and like like if I was adding clay on top or something like that. Uh, it, it's still very loose. You can see on the right bird on the right thigh right now. Like it, it's not very details or anything. But once you've done a lot of them, you can kind of start to know what what's the right. You, your judgment becomes better. You become wiser, like I was saying, and and you will you will be able to 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 know when it's enough and when it's not. And in this case, because I'm I'm the the client, I'm the judge here, and I'm lazy and <laughs> I'm trying to do this uh, as fast as possible, and not to bore you guys as well with with like infinite stupid rendering. Um, I thought that was enough to to make a point. To tell the story that I wanted to tell anyway. So now we reached a satisfying uh, conclusion to this for now, so I'm just moving on. But I'm looking at it right now, I'm like, I have no idea how these two things attach to the thigh armor, and even if, if this guy was running or moving. What would it cling around? I don't know. It's kind of stupid, but you know. Sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just a regular guy trying to do a job that I don't know how to do, that I know nothing about. And I'm just trying to fake it, and it works most of the time. And uh, now, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna struggle with legs and uh, 
just trying to find cool shapes again like it's it's a very tricky part because it's like a two 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 joints two points on with short uh distance between two of them a lot of short foreshortening and um it would have helped if i had like I said, do a side view and try to figure out what are what's ac what actually makes sense. But in this case, I mean, again, I'm I'm only looking for cool looking things. I'm not too. I mean, I am trying hard to make it look functional and believable. But because this thing is never going to get built, or it, it just the, the the number one thing is to make it look cool first, and then try to incorporate that in some sort of functional design. Sorry for the purist out there. I'm I'm really not an industrial designer. I try. I try to learn. And I will eventually. But again, like uh, again it's very important to try to to create volumes that don't really follow the main main volume like the cylinder of the leg but that kind of are going coming across or coming out of it or are or overlap but in an interesting way not only to create like again 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 <laughs> i repeat myself so many times um but that, that's just how you learn um again it's just to create generate excuses for interesting light and shadow shapes, I guess. Yeah, I'm, uh, so I'm trying. I'm trying form different forms, pulling, pulling out form, adding, removing, cutting, refining. Creating fake. Reflection shapes that will never exist or makes no sense, but they look good. It's a, I don't think I've talked about that, but the the, the whole point. Um, well, I did a little bit when I was t talking about silhouette at the beginning, where it's like <clears throat> you always try to connect shapes, and this is because you're creating, you're trying to create what uh, what is called lost edges. Like lost edges is like the um, it's uh it's like when two uh, volume connect at some point where their their values and in that area are the same and so they kind of blend and they kind of they kind of the, the, the edge between them disappear and it's it's a very clever way to connect two things and for some reason it's again one of those things that the eye your eyeball loves to look at for some reason um i mean the reason is because it just creates a simpler, bigger shape to understand. And again, it's one of those things that the brain loves. And, and I discovered that years ago when I was reading the Richard Schmidt book on uh, Alla Prima, where he explains that it's like the highest level of refinement or the highest level of, of skills you can, you can uh, learn in painting is when you start to understand and, and, and use uh, lost edges in the right way or you start seeing them in nature and and nature has so many ways and this is also i mean and it's, it's such a big subject but it's so important I've, and i've noticed that all the all the successful painters out there they're all something that actually the public respond to that all of those paintings most most of the time i mean i'm talking about the representation representational art here um they, they all they all include a really high level of, of uh, lost edge work um it's just again it's just one of those things like the, the brain responds so well to it um that that's and so for me it's like it's something that i constantly seek and 
uh, and, and, and again, like you're trying to find excuses for them everywhere. So here, for example, is like how the metal reflection connects different parts uh, together because it, first of all, it, it, it's across the form uh, because it's a it's a, several cylinders that connect to each other, and you connect them using that called a reflection shape. Um, but also, it's, I mean, there's so many there's so many ways to do it. Um, and if you look at nature again, uh, they, they are they are everywhere, and that that's in a way how you do some uh, realistic work. Uh, your eyes know that something realistic is bound to generate a lot of uh, a lot of lost edges, and um, and even like I've noticed that they, in anime they do it a lot. They they they, they call it broken lines, um, I think, and but it's another. It's a way f with using that style to create lost edges too. It's like you're using using the least amount of lines to describe the volume that you want to describe. Because the the the, the great thing with the brain is like the brain the the brain fills the blank. Um, it's like when you have a word and the, the first and last letter is right, but all the letters are mixed in the middle, for example, and the brain does the the job of like putting them back in order. Um, so it's the same, or it's the same if you remove certain amount of letters from a word, your your brain can still uh, kind of guess what a word is. Well, it's the same thing. It's like uh, um, you you you're using your ed you're breaking your edges and you connect uh, different volumes together by uh, putting the least amount of information necessary to describe that volume. And by doing that, you're going to generate uh, lost edges. And and those are those your brain just loves loves that. I don't know. It's just like. Um, Maybe it's because the brain loves to do that work, loves to do that that uh, filling out the blank uh, cognitive work, I guess, that, that it's so successful. It, it's just pleasing. I don't know how to explain it, um, but it does work and, and it's like the, it's like, a, it's, it's one of those things that works all the time. It really does. And that's what makes me love also painting and rendering because it's, a, it's really a fun game to try to do that all the time, to try to find them, to try to find an excuse for them. And, and like again, like I was saying, when when you have a combination of functionality and logic, functionality, logic, lighting on the, on the, on the piece, and then in there you also find places for really quote-unquote smart lost edges that, that are just at the right place, it's just, it's just really cool. It just cre it instantly creates something interesting to look at. Like, like for example, you see on this leg, the, all the black areas are kind of linked together at, at some point because all the, the, the different part, the edges of all the different parts are kind of disappearing one way or another, and so all the black parts are connected to each other. What, that's what I'm saying when I'm talking about lost edges. And all throughout this character, they're, they're everywhere. And, 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 I, and I, it is like something that I've sort of, for the most part, uh, willingly put there all like design in that way because i know that it just works like that it just works better like that it's like it's, it's all the same with all these quote-unquote rules is that it's just um they're not rules it's just things that people have noticed tend to produce more visually pleasing work than other ways of doing it but again it's very subjective and etc cetera, etc cetera, but um because we're trying to do something fairly realistic here, uh, if that's what you're trying to do, well, it, it just sort of helps to do that. You know that you know that it's a recipe for success. Of course, there's other ways to do it, but it's a recipe for success. So you know that if you're going that route, it might you might have more chances to do something that will please your client than than not. I guess I don't know.